good afternoon everybody, boys and girls, mums and dads. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, you all to the garden table and I'd like to acknowledge and recognise all the life members from both football clubs, the Kiwi Bombers and the Waratah Warriors. You'll understand today our patron is our one and only Chief Minister, Mr Michael Gunner, and he has put on this day for us today. So I'd like you to recognise that and a round of applause for Michael. Thank you. He's also going to be escorting the umpires out. Well, they're already there, but he's going to be watching the magnificent task come out and he will be tossing the coin. So we want to thank you, Michael, and we'll have more to say about that a little bit later on. So boys, whenever you're ready. And we're coming out with our under 10s and under 12s, mini league kids. Have a look at them all.
Pipe and Mark O'Gara. Thank you, Mark. Just down a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Gardens Oval for round six of the TIO NTFL Men's Premier League 2019-2020 TIO NTFL season. In just a few minutes' time, uh, Waratah up against the Tiwi Bombers. In the commentary box this afternoon, Stu Davis and none other than the Chief Minister of the Northern Territory, Michael Gunner. Uh, Michael Gunner, we might start with you. You are the patron of the Waratahs Football Club. Obviously hoping the Tars will get up for a win today. Absolutely. They're looking good too. Fairly fit. Nice warm day down here. Let's see if they can run the Tiwis off their legs. Stu, um, having a look through the, uh, the sheet today, we can see Tars have got a pretty full strength side ahead of them. They have. They, um, they, they pushed Nightcliff pretty well for the first half last week. And, uh, you know, they're a lot better side when they've got the likes of A Bankers, Sam mm -hmm. Godden, Steve Strubance, Andrew Moore, Mitch O'Donnell in the side. And none of those were playing last week. And this week we, we see that Ankers and Struvents and O'Donnell are in the side, so they're a lot stronger. And, and conversely, I think, too, we've got a few, uh, a few important players missing, so maybe the premiership table positions aren't, uh, aren't going to be a, a real indicator of where this game's going to go. Well, we know that the Tars haven't had a win so far this season, controversially stripped of that uh, round three win. Chief, are you the lucky charm for them today? Fingers crossed. I was a bit devoted when they lost the other day with the, uh, the team sheet mistake. But I think... Tiwis last week went after the siren, or essentially before, the, just after the siren there, one point. I think the Tars can take it close today. First bounce, Stu Davis, take us away. So the uh, the two big men in the middle, Arichio and uh, Whale Buxton for Tiwi. Tiwi uh, mop up across half back as a quick kick came in and uh, comes out here to Matthew Cantilla, tall young fella, chips in short to John P Papunga Mary. The half passes off to Michael Dunn, running off half back as normal. Kicks out wide to the outer side flank. And uh, Harley Puruntaramiri out there under some pressure. Um, but the ball uh, trickles out of bounds, and we have our first boundary throw in. Chief Minister Michael Gunner in the commentary box with us this afternoon. Chief, I understand that uh, between your busy schedule, I know I think it was uh, late last year or early this year, you actually got out to uh, umpire a match. I love doing that when I get out remote. Give the umpire out there a bit of a spell. They usually do every single game in the community. And uh, just a volunteer. So Charlie Molyneux took uh, that one off the, the ruck contest, kicked deep into the forward line, and uh, and it's forced over the boundary line right next to the uh, behind post. Tiwi's attacking end. So we see one minute gone here at Gardens Oval. Of course, Waratah with that first inside of 50 there. Umpire throws the ball back in now. The two big fellas again. Arichio reaches over the top, taps it forward. Struggle for possession in there. Looks like it's not going to come out cleanly and we'll have a, uh, a ball up about 15 metres out from the Tiwi goal at the city end of the ground. Chief, understand rugby was your uh, sport of choice when you were a bit younger though? I played everything in the territory, I think like most kids, Aussie rules, cricket, union, but the, yeah, union was the one I was actually fairly you know, passable at. Snap there from uh, Owen Henry Jr. off the ruck contest, but uh, a minor score only. So the first score of the game, Tiwi Bombers, one point on the board. A Bankers receives the kick in here, chips in short to Jordan Gardner on the halfback flank. On the left foot going down the grandstand wing, 
and uh, Bugler in the contest there, but outmarked by uh, Chris Luff. Chris Luff played uh, quite a bit of WAFL football and uh, he, uh, a couple of games last year for Tiwi and good to see him back again this year. Yep, his kick is chopped off by Bailey Zobel who uh, chips across the outer side of the ground to Keeley. Keeley hand passes over the top that puts his teammate in trouble there but uh, Aranta does pretty well to get it out wide and um, Mitch O'Donnell takes a mark. Chips in to Brodie Carroll. Quick hands but it's gone behind the player and uh, Tiwi will mop this one up, but uh, a bit of pressure there, and Anchors is in again. It's caught with the ball, manages to get a hand pass away, and uh, now it spills out wide. Anchors again tries to pick up hand passes to, to grass out in front of him, um, and uh, no clear possession out there. But uh, Anchors again on the end of a hand pass, kicks it in towards the goal square, but it's just drifting away to the near side for... Uh, a minor score to Waratahs to uh, to even the scores. Chief, did you get a chance to see uh, Cyril Rioli in action for the Bombers last week? No, nah, I saw the highlights though. They're pretty special. Certainly a few of them. But he can play the GB, can't play Gardens. Is that yeah. what we're going with? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so Gardner there taken high just outside the 50 metre arc for Waratahs. And uh, kicks in long towards the top of the goal square. Bit of wrestling down there, comes off hands over the back. Strubens with a snap over the shoulder, looks pretty good. And it is the first goal of the game for Waratahs. So there you go, the early momentum with the Tiwi Bombers. Uh, of course, Waratah, uh, uh, though, 1-1-7 uh, now. The Tiwi Bombers just the straight one behind with Chief Minister Michael Gunner here at Gardens Oval this afternoon. Chief, a lot of teams uh, within the NTFL Men's Premier League, eight and then plenty more across the other divisions as well. Why patron of the Tars, though? Uh -huh. Well, I'm the member for Fanny Bay. I think it comes with the territory. Literally. No. <laughs> um, some of the best memories I've got of football are down here at Gardens. Uh, there was a very magic day with Brendan Pabola when he kicked the bag down here. Mm. Just goes off down at the Gardens. I've played a few games of um, Aussie Rules and Cricket down here and I just think this is a very special part of the world and I'm very grateful to, and to have the privilege of being patron of, of the Mighty Tars. Whale Buxton and Arricio again in ruck. Buxton up early. Arricio reaches and taps down but uh, picked up in there by Tiwi but unable to get it away cleanly. Players pile in on top, ball works loose now. And uh, Whale Buxton again gets a hand in, but uh, Brody Carroll gets a quick hand pass out. Chip comes across, it's all Tiwi there though, chopping it off. But uh, ball comes to ground again, and the big American Oricio hand passes out over the top to Minkok. Minkok drives long into the forward line, and uh, free kick's been found down there. It'll go the way of Tiwi, looks like Rodney Baird down there. It might have been for the push. And he chips out into the back pocket here. And uh, Luff again kicks down the line towards the wing. The two Ruckman do contest there, but off the back. And uh, it's Owen Henry bursting through, tapping it in front. Gets a kick to it, but uh, sees it across the boundary line. Umpire says that uh, we'll throw it in and start proceedings again. A few Tars fans calling for uh, deliberate there. Yeah, I think that was a pretty legitimate accident. Yeah. <laughs> Throw in now, and uh, Aricho in front taps it straight down in front of him. Adam Tipple Woody there trying to pick up cleanly, but now the kick comes in from Dion Mankara right into the goal square. Oh. Trips over down there, and uh, Jared Cunningham ball bounced at his feet, and he uh, kicked it out of the air and threw for the equalising goal. Bit of entertaining football there, Michael Gunner. Yeah, it's a frustrating to see the tar player fall over there, and and, and Tiwi get it over the line for a goal. I think we need to watch the front of the contest to it, those, um, those bull-ups. Tiwi's about to break away of their pace. They really are, and that's something that the Bombers are really known for in this competition is their pace, is that when they get the run on, scores come very quickly. And Arricio for Waratah has been, uh, been a colossus in ruck this year. Actually, he's, he's dominated most weeks, but uh, that hasn't, of course, converted to wins on the scoreboard, so they need to, need to be getting on the end of the, the good work that he's doing. So, so six minutes gone in the first quarter here at Gardens Oval. Scores are level. Well, Buxton again early, but uh, Mankara out of the centre. So another clearance to Tiwi. Deep into the forward line. Tim Mosquito going back with the flight of the ball. Couldn't take it. Keeley cleans up. Oda to uh, Zobel. Back to Keeley. Out to Mosquito. And uh, Tars a chance to break away from the full back line now. Chips into Jacob Shaker at uh, half back. He sh chips in short again. And... Uh, 
This one's taken by Michael Graham inside the centre square. Graham chips out wide and finds Brendan Minkulk. Another chip that's smothered, uh, half smothered off the mark. Shaper tidies up back to Minkulk. Minkulk short again. Uh, no mark taken, but a free kick has been paid. And that's awarded to Dom Booth on the outer side, just near the, uh, the scoreboard, which shows that the scores are level seven minutes into the first quarter. So Dom Booth now drives it deep into the forward pocket area. Whale Buxton back there off his hands. It bounces back into his arms and he's wrapped up pretty quickly by Riccio. And uh, the umpire says, I'll have that one. And umpire Ben Heaslip moves in and uh, will throw this one up in inside uh, Tars forward 50. Riccio again gets the tap, cleans up his own work with a quick hand pass out. Snap on goal from Michael Graham, but it's uh, drifted across to the right-hand side and it's a minor score only. Michael, how good is it to see quite a few people here today? We know as we come into the wet season here in Darwin, you know, people traditionally hibernate, but it's a good little crowd here at Gardens today. It is, and I think we can actually build on this once the lights go in. It yes, gets a bit cooler, of course. You know, magic spot, come down here, watch footy on the lights. During the dry season, a bit of quicker on the lights. A dangerous quick kick back across goal there. Uh, almost brought two we undone, but uh, Waratahs could only manage a minor score. Michael Dunn plays on straight out of the goal square and goes down looking for a teammate, but it's uh, chipped over, hand passed over by Tars. Picked up again by um, John Papungamiri, who uh, finds a teammate out on the outer flank, kicks it into the centre square. Anyone's ball there. Keeley comes through strongly, um, but unable to maintain possession. Tiwi work it away and uh, Papunga Mary again finds a player all by himself on the outer side. I think that's Molyneux. Drives in long to the goal square. Mosquito's back there, but uh, it's on over his head, but three for a minor score. Not bad from 50 out. Chief, how's your uh, your range on your kick? I'm, I'm OK for about 35. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I just struggle to do 35 feet. Mosquito straight up the middle to Zobel at, uh, at centre-half back. And uh, he's looking for options now. Kicks smothered Gee, off the mark. Smother. Uh, wins it back though. A bit of uh, volleyball in there. And uh, it's Tiwi who pick it up through Jared Cunningham on the left foot. Snap at goal, but he's missed to the near side. A minor score again. So off target a bit both sides early in the game. Uh, just the one goal each so far. Mosquito <coughs> chips in short to Shaper in the back pocket. Shaper back after a couple of years away. Goes in short again and finds uh, Rakawasa. Rakawasa finds a player by himself. Looks like Henry Kiranua out there. On the left foot, he's down and finds Strubance. They seem to be able to find players unmarked all the way down there. Strubance kicks inside 50 where. Uh, it's Anchors who has a snap on goal, but again offline on the near side. And uh, that minor score um, gives Waratah the lead again. So once again, those missed opportunities now. Waratah 1-4-10, the Tiwi Bombers 1-3-9. Ten minutes into the first quarter here at Gardens Oval. And Luff drives long to the outer side. Rakawasa reaches over the top, gets a fist to it and uh, sees the ball. Out of bounds between wing and half forward on the outer side of the ground, just uh, just around from the scoreboard. Michael Gunner with us this afternoon. Michael, one of the things I love about football here in the Territory, and I find this every Saturday when I go down to TIO Stadium, is the community atmosphere. I think there's no other place where it doesn't matter your, your age, race, religion, that footy really unites people in the Territory, doesn't it? I think outside of maybe the NT government, uh, football is in the most communities in the NT. You think about every single community you go to, what's there? It's mm. AFL. Mm. So a free kick in the runt contest there went uh, the way of Waratahs, but uh, unable to capitalise. A chip comes in now and Keranua takes the mark. He plays on quickly across goal looking for Cantilla, who takes the mark. About 35 out, slight angle, and uh, you would think that uh, it'd be a strong chance of converting from there. Waratah hold the, the one-point lead at the moment at the 11.5-minute mark, and um, this will be a, a handy one to kick-start them in this first quarter. Chief, can Cantilla do it from here? Absolutely. Calm, poised. 
Kicks on its way, it's starting to drift, and it uh, mm. has just drifted across for yet another minor score. So we've got 1-5-11, plays 1-3-9 halfway through the first quarter. Kick comes out over everyone's head here towards the grandstand wing. It's uh, Zobel in front, hand passes back across to Carroll. Carroll to Minko, to uh, Cantilla, sorry. Um, back to Bailey Zobel, and Zobel steadies now. Looks for a target inside forward 50 and finds Matthew Blake just outside the 50. On the left foot, he goes wide. Looks for uh, Anchors out there, and Anchors takes the mark. Again, about 35 out, uh, about a 45-degree angle, and um, Anchors kicked plenty of goals when he's played for Waratahs this year, so uh, they'd be hoping that he, he can be on target this time. Chief, I don't know how much you know about Abe Anchors, but uh, Alice Springs boy, and of course one of NT Thunder's probably best players over the last four or five years as well. And his uh, brother's been a good luck charm for the Feds. Won a few flags down there. Yes, of course. Anchors kick on the way now. Going up on, not moving much. That looks pretty good. Straight through the middle and uh, a, a, a reward, I think, for uh, a fair bit of uh, attacking football from Tars. They've been inside 50 a fair bit in this first quarter and, uh, and a goal to Anchors sees them uh, stretch that lead slightly. Similar point to what you were saying before about how AFL pulls everyone together across the entire Northern Territory. Mm. You know, on the national stage, they often joke that the captain of the Australian cricket team is as important as the Prime Minister. Yes, yes. I think you could say the CEO of AFL-NT in the Northern Territory might be similar compared to the Chief Minister. Like, this, the, you know, AFL is so important to so many people right across the entire Territory. And Stu does a spectacular job as well when talking about um, AFL-NT CEO Stu Totham. I mean, it is a large league. You've got so many players coming in and out constantly as well. So many things to juggle, but he certainly does a great job. Absolutely. So Simpson in the ruck for uh, Tiwi this time, giving Whale Buxton a bit of a chop oh. out. It's uh, Shaper who came out with the ball, but he was tackled as he kicked. Uh, Blake picks it up and he's tackled immediately and uh, we'll have a ball up uh, straight across from the centre circles towards the grandstand. So no, no territorial advantage here. Riccio again, too strong in the ruck, gets the tap down to Carroll, looked like he was taken high there and the umpire sees it that way. Umpire Joel Morrison says, yes Brodie Carroll, you can have this free kick and uh, Tars look to go into attack again. Speaking of CEOs, Joel Morrison out on the field today as an umpire, also the CEO of Cricket NT. How good is that to see? Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Just got to see Stewie Tottenham out on the cricket field now. Yeah, they've got to do a bit of a swap deal, don't they? <laughs> One of his I like is as our umpire, Stuart Totham. Yes. <laughs> Boundary throw in there, Ruckman wrestling. Arriccio again with strength, but uh, Jeffrey Simon on the end of that kicks it on the left foot quickly. Zobel in there again, getting plenty of the ball early in the game. Quick kick by Heenan into a pretty open forward line. Uh, Mosquito down there in contest with Harley Pluin Tatamiri. Mosquito there first, gets a hand pass across. Keely there to help out. Under pressure, hand passes back towards Mosquito, working the ball in front of him, playing for a free kick, not paid. Chopped off by Tiwi, and uh, stacks on the mill, and um, oh, tell you what, lo loses his hat. And Tiwi Mosquito under some pressure there, wasn't he, on the back line? He was, <laughs> and, uh, and, and helped out by Harrison Keeley, who's been uh, really solid for Waratah all season this year. Mauricio again with strength gets the punch out. Quick kick comes forward, but uh, that man Keeley again cleans up, plays on with a hand pass. Out here to Brodie Carroll. His chip in finds Zobel. Would have been a free kick downfield anyway. Zobel plays on quickly, hand passes across to Minkulk. Minkulk in trouble back again, and uh, Tars coming out. Ball's back in the hands of Zobel. Not sure which way to go. Goes out to Booth. Booth. Kicks out in front of Anchors, who's got plenty of territory at the moment, if he can pick it up cleanly. Hand passes straight across to Minkulk. Minkulk running in, will have a shot at goal from about 30 out, and has kicked the goal. <laughs> so uh, Minkulk's kick there. Uh, off the boot, it looked like it was uh, a bit of a wobbler out to the left, but uh, obviously, obviously wobbled the right way, and, uh, and back through for... Uh, Another valuable goal for We well, can see here on the replay just this quick work from Abe Ankers as well. Picks it up, knows he's under pressure, palms it off quickly, and then something out of nothing. Yeah, and, and Minkulk steadied, and uh, although the kick uh, wasn't the prettiest off the boot, he, he had the presence of mind to take his time and uh, 
and get the shot on goal. Chief, you could be the good luck charm so far. As we mentioned, Waratahs haven't won a game so far, but they are now 23-9 up against the Tiwi Bombers. 17 minutes gone in the first quarter. Well, I'll take the glory. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're celebrating it with the, the uh, end of the fourth quarter if they win. Sorry, Chief, but similar to last week's first quarter, I'm afraid. It was too, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Tiwi attacking again. Dion Mankara with a long kick from outside 50, but uh, he's off target and uh, a minor score again. Chief, what a great success story the Tiwi Bombers are, though. I mean, obviously, I know you are a patron of the Tars, but they're one of the most recent uh, teams to join the league. Uh, already racked up a premiership within their short. I think it'd be the seventh or eighth year that they've been in the competition. And it comes back to what you were saying before about football is right across the territory, and it's so popular right across the territory. And to see um, players who live and work on the Tiwi Islands be able to compete in the highest level in territory footy must be uh, really great to see. Absolutely. Uh, I went out and spoke to them before the last election. Very strong men's team and women's team. Like, yep. the, you know, both, everyone out there gets involved. And what I couldn't believe in some respects was that we hadn't backed them up yet at the Tiwi Oval. Yeah. So, you know, under our government this term, we've given them some change rooms and a bit more shade at the Oval just to really try and support them because they really are um, an incredible team. And what better way to enjoy a time in the Territory than head out on a ferry or a boat yep. across the Tiwi Islands, watch a game of footy, buy some art, get involved. Like, it should be a real tourist experience. Absolutely. So uh, Tiwi going forward through Travis Tambling, but uh, his kick was chopped off. Umpire said there was no mark, it was touched and uh, worked across the boundary line for a boundary throw in. Right forward pocket for Tiwi heading towards the city end of uh, beautiful Gardens Oval. Just saw Aussie Wanamiri on screen there as well with that big heavy tackle. There's a great uh, AFL success story right out of the Tiwis as well. Boundary throw in now. Riccio by himself there, but uh, umpire's paid a blocking free kick outside of the ruck contest and uh, it'll be a Tiwi shot on goal from uh, only about 20 metres out and it's, uh, it's that man Jared Cunningham again who, was, who kicked their first goal and uh, he'll be hoping to, to get another here and, uh, and peg them back a little. Cunningham with 125 games under his belt. No problem there for Jared Cunningham. He's an experienced goal kicker. Kicked about 20 in a game down in country Victoria this year, I think. So uh, he knows where, knows how to get them through the, the big white sticks, that's for sure. So. Down south, they talk about football factories, but I don't mm. think anywhere can claim more genuine A-grade AFL mm. talent per head than the Tiwis. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chief, you touched on before the uh, lights here at Gardens Oval. What's the timeline like on that at the moment? So we're pushing on council, so we've given them the money. It's all been approved and it's all ready to go. They're talking about starting to put them in, in around February, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, just as soon as possible, um, get them up, let, let you know, footballers play under lights, mm -hmm. train under lights. It would just really expand the competition and make it much more uh, friendly for kids too. Yep. Hi, John Rawsthorne with the duties this time in the centre. Whale Buxton up early, gets the tap down this time. Ball spills out and uh, no clear possession out of the middle. It's uh, tapped forward again. Anchors tries to get a kick out, but it's Tiwi who come away with a quick hand pass comes out here. But uh, again, no clear possession and uh, it's a bit of a scramble inside the centre square still there. Jump by Joel Morrison says... Uh, Sorry, Rawsthorne it was, says that's a, that's a throw. And uh, and it'll clear out now with a free kick to Waratah. Zobel again out wide to Brodie Carroll. Called Zobel's name plenty of times, Matty, so far in the call. He's getting plenty of the ball around around uh, in an on-field, on-ball roll. So James Arata now kicks down towards half-forward. Big Whale Buxton there, unable to take the mark. Booth uh, off-hands, gets a hand pass back to Shaper. Out wide to Carroll. Carroll on the left foot. Goes down towards the 50 metre arc. Uh, ball's punched away from behind. A quick kick in by Jordan Wilkins, a young fella who uh, spends a bit of time in the ruck for Waratahs, but his mark was uh, his kick was chopped off. And uh, Molyneux does the relieving work for Tiwi out to the outer side. Where Richard Purantadamere is knocking the ball in front of him. Hotly pursued by Henry Kerrigan. with some pace there. Goes for a bounce, loses control, gets it back, bounces again, running inside 50. Has a shot on goal, no one in the goal square, and it's kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Contender for goal of the year, I think, Matty. He's oh. worked that ball from half back. Even the Tars fans are happy with that one. Even Chief Minister Michael Gunnan's got a smile on his face after that one. That's why I want to see a Territory AFL team. Imagine Absolutely. seeing that every second week up here.
we've got the talent for it. So we're uh, almost 22 minutes in in this uh, this round six TIO NTFL game at Gardens Oval, and uh, just watching the replay there, some uh, terrific work by Richard Purun Tatamiri. Kept the ball in front of him all the way, under pressure all the way down that out of out of wing, and uh, and still had the composure to finish with a goal. Up by Ben Heaslip throws it up. Uh, the young fella in the ruck over the top, Wilkins, was a good tap. And uh, now Blake butters up, uh, can't take clean possession, hand passes across, but um, that Jordan Gardner there was uh, under pressure immediately as he received the ball, and we'll have a ball up on the outer side. Well, Buxton this time taps forward, coming through his Molyneux, can't take uh, possession, and uh, Blake... Kicks out wide to the wing here. Roy Farmer's first there. Uh, chipped a bit short, but um, picked up nicely by John Papangamiri. Kicks across to centre half forward. And uh, Tiwi drive it in long again through Matthew Cantilla. Yeah, Cunningham at the end there, but uh, it's, it's Tars who kick it away, and it's marked by Cantilla on the outer half back flank, relieving for Tars. Taj is looking to slow the ball down here a bit. The last five minutes has all been uh, Bombers' territory, so they'll be, I think, happy just to perhaps hold possession and just see this quarter out. We know 22 minutes gone in the first quarter, and now, after an early Taj lead, scores a level at 23 points each. So, anchors again outside in, out in front of the scoreboard. Kicks in forward looking for Bugler, whose name we really haven't called so far today. Picked up again and driven in. Oh, um, Kiranua got a hand to it there, which... Uh, meant that the Tiwi player was unable, unable to take possession and uh, Brady Carroll strolled in for the easiest of goals to uh, to retain a lead for Waratah. Two Tars players left in the square all by themselves there, Stu. Yeah, just uh, just a hand in by Henry Kiranua. It looked like it was going to be an easy chop-off mark to Tiwi, but uh, got the hand in and managed to get it over the top. So um, just uh, the defensive work paid off in the forward line. See in the replay there, <laughs> stroll in the park in the end. By Mark Holford uh, to do the ball up this time, just making sure the numbers are right in the centre square. Of course, the new rules this year mean uh, that uh, we have to have numbers in the right places at the centre bounces. Beautiful bounce straight up and high. It's uh, Tiwi who win the tap, but uh, Tars take possession. And a high tackle there to Dom Booth. We'll see uh, him give Tars the opportunity to uh, go in, into attack once again late in this first quarter. What's your verdict in the 6-6-6? I like it. I, I think it's good, particularly when you've got a close game uh, at the towards the end of the fourth quarter there. It stops that flooding of the defensive 50, which we so often see, and it slows down play. Uh, we know a few NTFL teams have been caught out so far this season. I don't think penalised for it. Um, but, yeah, overall, I, I think a good decision. So the siren's gone here. Justin Bugler's got a mark, and he'll be kicking from 50 after the siren. Uh, Waratah leading by a goal at the moment, and Bugler looking to double that lead with uh, probably his first kick of the game uh, after the siren at quarter time few players back on the goal line hoping to uh, to get a hand of the ball but Bugler's got to a bit on that looks like it's pretty good it's carried uh, the a few meters press. over the top <laughs> and uh, the Waratah players uh, crowd around Bugler in congratulations and uh, Waratah with a two goal lead probably deserved in the end a two goal lead at quarter time. Certainly is it's quarter time here at Gardens Oval Waratah 5-5-35 five, five, Tiwi Bombers 3-5-23 Chief Minister Michael Gunner thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.
Welcome back to Gardens Oval where it's quarter time. Waratah 5 5 35, trailing the T Tiwi Bombers 3 5 23. Matt Hepworth, Stu Davis, and a late addition, but uh, better late than never. Wally Gallio, gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Stu, we might start with you that first quarter there. Uh, early momentum with the Tars, but then the Tiwi Bombers, gee, they played catch up footy pretty quick, didn't they? They did, got back uh, back level, and then and then Tars steadied again and kicked the last couple of goals. So uh, if there's uh, if there's any breeze out there, Tars were probably kicking into it in that quarter, but I don't really think it's having much effect. So uh, welcome, Wally, off the inter interchange bench. Thank you very much, Stu. Matt, how are, how, are you, how are you this afternoon? Yeah, we're doing pretty well, thanks. So ball up to start the second quarter. Riccio flicks it over the back, but uh, Tiwi again, as was, we saw repeatedly in the first quarter, get the clearance. Adam Tip and Woody out there breaks the tackle and uh, now runs away with a bounce and chips in short, finding Dion Mankara, who kicks into the goal square. Jared Cunningham over the back and uh, kicks from about a metre out, and that's a goal within the first 20 seconds in the second quarter. Yeah, so good uh, ball control by Adam Tip and Woody in the middle, and uh, he broke a cup, broke that tackle, and he just uh, really strung through the hips, even he's a slight player, and then used that uh, nice left foot of his and then Dion found Jared Cunningham running into an open goal so yeah. see we uh, start the second quarter as they finish the first so Cunningham's third goal three out of the four for for Tiwi and um, it's been a focal point up forward they uh, of course they've had um, they've had Jake Best in the forward line the last couple of weeks but he's not out there this week so uh, Cunningham replaces him virtually for this for this week and uh, started pretty well. So umpire Mark Holford in the middle, and uh, we've got Arricchio and Whale Buxton to do battle. Bounces very high in the middle there. Arricchio gets the tap to it, gets his hands on it again. Hand pass out. Brody Carroll in there gets a hand pass of sorts in front of Anchors, who kicks it off the ground, uh, out on the outer flank. Picked up there by Mitch O'Donnell, who's uh, tackled. Ball spills free. Umpire says play on, but now there's a free kick. And uh, it'll go Tiwi's way on the halfback flank out there. Kicking down towards the wing. Jeffrey Simon, uncontested, takes the mark in front of uh, the Ruckman Arricchio. Chips in short, but that's uh, misdirected and uh, cut off there by Gardner, who uh, gets caught in hand passes. And now Carroll drives Tars forward towards... The, half forward line ball spills over the back in front of Dom Booth and uh, another boundary throw in so uh, the, uh, the two big ruckmen again had a pretty good contest all day Whale Buxton and Arricchio Arricchio tries to work in front of them the throw falls short Picked up after the bounce by, uh, by Tiwi and hack forward Keeley. Oh. Tackled before he actually took possession there. The umpire saw it that way and uh, paid advantage. And, um, and now Simpson drives the ball inside the forward line. Comes over the back, but uh, we've got a free kick once again, or is it a boundary throw in out there? No, no it's, it's free pushing the back to, uh, to Bugler. Bugler. Justin Bugler kicked the goal uh, after the siren. And there's a free time. kick in the. Uh, at centre half forward there for Tiwi to Jeffrey Simon. Looks like that's against Henry Kiranua there. Roy. Yeah, just uh, slung him to the ground. They're having a bit of to do, and Henry yep. grabbed him and threw him to the ground. Yep. So Jeffrey Simon chips in short here. Ball sp spills off the chest, and Anchors uh, tidies up with the hand pass out wide to Minkalk, who can't, can't take it cleanly. Back to Anchors, chips in short and uh, Cantilla there tried to duck past and uh, umpire said you had plenty of opportunity to do something with that and got caught and is holding the ball so Michael Dunn with the free kick in the back pocket for Tiwi chips in short to Dion Mankara he wheels around on that left foot kicks out towards the grandstand wing contest out there ball spills to ground Paddy Heenan picks up hand passes across now Harley Puntaramiri Kicks the ball to centre half forward where there's no one for Tiwi. Keely uh, go, mopping up across half back there, picks it up, chips out wide, finding Bailey Zobel who hand passes over the top, looking for McCarthy. McCarthy tackled but gets a hand pass away to Zobel back across to Keely. They're uh, playing themselves into trouble a bit here. Keely gets a mongrel kick forward, but uh, it's all Waratah there and no problem at all. Timmy Mosquito takes the mark on the chest, but his kick misses the target. 
and um, O'Donnell in there at the bottom of the pack gets the hand pass out to Carroll who drives forward and finds Cantilla. Cantilla chips in looking for Keranua, can't take the markets over his head but he recovers to be first there. Tries to duck around the terrible tackle, duck the head and uh, the umpire uh, on the scene was uh, was letting that go but uh, but the umpire further down the ground said that that was a high tackle and um, Keranua will take the shot at goal from about 35 out out on the outer half forward flank. So Kiranua with a chance to uh, restore that quarter time lead. On the left foot, comes in towards goal now, looks pretty good. Players watch it go over their head. And uh, it's a goal to Kiranua. Maybe, um, maybe a bit fortunate in the end with the free kick. The first umpire said he ducked his head and was willing to let that go, but um, picked up. Just during that passage of play, Matthew Cantilla spent a fair bit of time down on the ground. Uh, a couple of medics had to come and uh, help him up. He has now come onto the interchange bench. A uh, little bit different to TIO, quite can't gather exactly where he's gone at the moment, but we will keep an eye on that. But uh, yeah, certainly spent a good probably minute or so down on the ground uh, before he managed to get up. So it was Matthew Cantilla from the Bombers, so we'll keep an eye on that one. So you're watching uh, Channel 4 Aboriginal TV coverage of the TIO NTFL Round 6 clash at Gardens Oval between Waratah Warriors and Tiwi Bombers. Umpire John Rawsthorne throws the ball up in the middle. Up early, the uh, Tiwi Ruckman there in uh, Simpson, but uh, Waratah kick it forward inside the forward 50. Strubens there overruns the ball. Spills back out the back and... Uh, Easy as you like. Cantilla runs into the open goal, and that's another for Waratah. Kim Cantilla that time on the end of uh, some strong work in and under by Struvens. Yeah, Riche's uh, been good in the middle for Waratahs, and the, uh, he's up against an undersized Ruckman for Tiwi Bombers, and he should ha get his hands on The only thing that worries me a little bit, Stu, is that Ariccio does a fair bit of the work and then towards the back end of the game when the game's closer in the balance that he's, he's you know, he's, he's a little bit tired and That's doesn't get around the ground as much as he does and doesn't get off the ground. So it yeah. be interesting to see what Ryan Ayres and the coaching staff of Waratahs do about it this week. Yeah, I know I know. early in the season he was doing the whole game and they've brought in mm -hmm. young Jordan Wilkins for the, this, the last couple of games. So he's given him a bit of a chop out but uh, doesn't get a lot of time on the ground. Anchors there... Uh, Pulls the kick and recovers. Kicks on the left foot now. Push out by Dunn. Takes possession of the ball. That was all fair, says the umpire. Comes into Heenan, who drives inside forward 50. Pulls force back towards the centre circles. Underneath the ball there, Michael Graham. He's, uh, the ball spills out now and uh, picked up cleanly. A clean set of heels there by um, Cosmos poor Jimmy. Uh, but uh, then lost control of the ball as he was running into the forward line. And uh, Tars tidy up again through Zobel, but uh, tackles applied as soon as the ball was received, and we'll have a ball up. Geez, poor Jimmy showed some glimpses of that Tiwi pace we've uh, seen a little bit of today already. Riccio gets his hand to that one again. This time it's Tambling who kicks the ball inside forward 50. Cunningham got his hands to the ball, unable to take the mark. Blake gets the chip out wide here to Zobel, goes further to Mosquito, and uh, he kicks down the wing where Gar Gardner takes the mark, pushed as he took the mark, but the umpire said that's all OK. And he goes in short to Michael Graham, who's played on, he's called to play on, he's under pressure now, he's in trouble, gets a hand pass out, and uh, it's Tambling who uh, kicks again towards that centre-half forward area. Numbers with Tiwi there, Austin Wanamiri on the end of it. Hand passes straight up in the air virtually, but is good enough to make something out of it. Gets his kick on the left foot towards goal, but just offline. And a minor score. Very clever by Dion Mankara. Then he just sort of watched yeah. the ball, held the uh, opposition player with one hand, just tapped it behind him and rolled back onto it. So Dion mankara has got some tricks. Ball's brought in again by Tiwi. Michael Graham takes a mark out at half back. Uh, looking for options now. Kicks towards the centre of the ground. His teammates outnumbered there, but manages to take the running. And Kiranua picks up, drives him forward to uh, 
an unmarked Strubance who strolls in towards goal and he kicks his second goal for the game. And uh, Waratah uh, get that one, get another one to uh, to stretch their lead again. When the Tars get it into the 50, they seem to be just cruising into the square. We saw that play in the first quarter, Stu, where there was two Tars players sitting in the square with absolutely no Bombers players around. Wally, is it a case that their back line's probably not, not set up quite right at the moment? No, I was just going to mention, Matt, that what, what Tiwi are doing and what uh, Tip has been trying to work with and same Jamie Scrimmage, or they're trying to, as the ball goes in their forward line, they want to roll up and set that press up so they can't okay, yep. get out on Gardens Oval because it's a smaller ground. But mm -hmm. when they do, if if Waratahs get that kick over the back, then they don't transition back and it, and they're caught out, you know, that Waratahs are holding their position mm. and Bombers aren't getting back quick enough. So the young fellow Wilkins is in the ruck for Tars this time. A beautiful tap down to... Uh, Anchors running through, <laughs> kicks from 50, it's offline and a minor score. So Riccio has uh, has gone off for the spell and um, and welcomes some good work in the centre there at that time. Ball's brought in, that's uh, plenty of pressure there for Tiwi. Struvance again on the left hand, hand passes out to Brody Carroll. He has a shot but that's uh, looks like it's going to miss to the left hand side and uh, probably should have done better from there Wally. Yeah, he's, uh, Brady's a good finisher in front of goal. I think just the late hit on him sort of unbalanced him a little bit, so he missed that and it went to the left. So, uh, Tiwi uh, bringing it back through the middle now. Paddy Heenan with a chance to send them forward. Finds John Papungamari out on the in front of the scoreboard. He uh, steadies, kicks inside 50. Bit of misunderstanding from the Tiwi players there. Sees the ball come to ground. Tars able to scramble it out and they've got the numbers here but uh, it's Heenan who's first there gets hand pass over the top not to a teammate and Carroll chips now looking for Brendan Minkolk who can't take the mark ball spills off his chest and out and over the boundary line ball handling crucial in those circumstances Waratah were away then but uh, unable to take it cleanly and spilled out of bounds so we've got a, a restart out on the outer wing So young Wilkins now up against Whale Buxton. But the th throw in favours Wilkins, who uh, finds a teammate with his tap. Brody Carroll eventually on the end of it kicks it forward, and Henry Kiranua, almost uncontested, takes the mark there in front of Michael Dunn. Kiranua left foot towards uh, the top of the square, and a mark over oh, the top. Beautifully work. taken by Kim Cantilla. And uh, he'll have a shot for goal from about 25 out directly in front. Uh, we saw him finish in the first quarter and uh, expect that he'll do the same here. See, we players seem a little bit uh, up and down at the moment. They're mm. not spreading and working hard for each other as they did in the first part of the quarter. And their back line, like they've done contested, it's unusual that Michael Dunn lets someone take an uncontested mark in front of him like that. Cantilla's kick has uh, just squeezed in, so that's another goal for Tars, and that's four in a row in this quarter after Tiwi got the first one early on with Jared Cunningham, but uh, four goals to one now in this quarter, and uh, Tars are trying to starting to put a bit of a bit of space between them. Abe Anker's doing a lot of work around the ground. He's had uh, mm. a lot of centre clearances. He had that boundary throw and clearance, and then butted up again and got it back and sort of worked that ball inside 50 and you know from the last centre bounce after last Waratah goal he got the centre clearance clear and drove that into the 50 as well so he's lifted his work weight and Waratahs are benefiting from it. So Riccio's back on the ground but he's gone forward. Young Wilkins still in the ruck here against um, Whale Buxton. Wilkins gets high, gets mm. the tap down to anchors again. No wonder they're leaving in the middle. Ball bounces inside the forward 50. Richo takes possession, but he's wrapped up by Luff immediately. And uh, umpire says that's a sling tackle. And uh, Richo will be the recipient of the free kick. He uh, he thinks that he's holding the ball, but uh, but the ball is actually going to be his. So it'll be interesting to see if he takes the shot or looks to hand it off here. Uh, I think Ruckman like to kick uh, goals, don't they, Stewie? I think they do, but it depends who's around them. I know if... Uh, if he was playing for Nightcliff, Brighty Fowler would be there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Abe Ankers was sneaking over, but Jeffrey Simon sort of walked up and ran over to him then. They all said, we're here if you need, here if you need. 
Riccio's kick on goal now. Uh, maybe there was a better option. He's uh, dragged that pretty heavily and it's gone out of bounds on the full. So um, we'll have a relieving free kick in the back pocket. It'll be Silvani Bambui, ba Babui, sorry, to uh, to bring the ball back in for Tiwi. Numbers are all clustered on the outer side. He uh, chips in short. Finds Purun uh, Papungamiri, sorry, who kicked that magnificent goal in the first quarter running down the outer, outer wing. Ball spills to ground now. It's uh, Waratah's got the numbers there as it comes out to uh, Minkok. Minkok's tackled, gets a hand pass away though. Simpson uh, tackled as he picked up the ball. Tempers uh, flared a little bit, but uh, nothing in that. And uh, umpire's on top of it quickly. And we'll have a ball up just on the corner of the centre square. Waratah's attacking end. Riccio in ruck this time. They all missed it, I think. Molyneux got the kick out wide. There's no one out there. It'll be a foot race to see who gets there first. It's the big run ruck, ruck, Ruckman that gets there first, but uh, overruns it. And uh, now some clever work in there. Um, but it didn't come out cleanly. Papunga Mary again on the bottom of it. Quick kick comes out, but uh, it's uh, Tiwi who come away with a kick in the air from Matthew Cantilla, but uh, tied it up down there by Tars and Shaper will chip out wide where there's some space here for Bailey Zobel. Zobel goes long into the forward line looking for Bugler on the lead, but he's unable to take the mark. Rodney Baird tidies up, sees Mullineau in the middle and uh, finds him in amongst four Waratah players. He now chips wide for Michael Dunn, who loves running off that half-back line. He's got nowhere to go and anchors rounds him up, but uh, gets his kick in. Hand pass comes back again, and Dunn uh, again being rounded up by anchors, but uh, manages to get his kick forward. And uh, Tip and Woody out there with a hand pass back to Dunn, back to Adam Tip and Woody on the left foot, across to the centre of the ground. Riccio comes over the top, knocks it to ground, and uh, Minkolk gets the hand pass away, but uh, ineffective. Riccio bends down, picks it up, ball spills free. McCarthy gets a hand pass out wide, and uh, some good body work there from um, uh, Harley Puntadamiri, sorry, and uh, sees Tiwi get the opportunity to take possession. Tambling kicks in towards Paddy Heenan, a uh, pinpoint pass over the top of a couple of Waratah players. Heenan hand passes out wide now to Jeffrey Simon running in, kicks towards goal and uh, looks good. And a much needed goal on the board for Tiwi through Jeffrey Simon. Yeah, so I think Waratah's are doing a really good job. They just slowed the game down by playing one on one and not letting Tiwi, like Abe Ankers, did a lot of work over the far yeah, side of the and ground. Third and second work. and third yeah. effort on Michael Dunn and Adam Tip and Woody. And then uh, when Tiwi spread the ball wide, they just sort of got caught in the corridor because it aren't in the corridor, Waratahs, but they didn't spread out wide. And then Jeffrey Simon saw the opportunity from he was standing at half back and saw the ball come out this way and he set up the goal from. The far side of the ground. So Tiwi get their second for the quarter, and Waratahs have got four for this. So the two second string ruckmen basically in uh, in contest this time. Simpson and uh, Young Wilkins. Wilkins over the top, taps it forward. They've had some success with clearances since Wilkins has been in there, mm. and uh, ball's been knocked around on the ground. And uh, eventually, it's Austin Wanamary who comes out with it. On the left foot, kicks forward to Cunningham. He's inside the centre square, though. There'll be no goal for him from there. Swings on the left foot. And in front of Timmy Mosquito, very cleverly uh, used his body, got in position and took the intercept mark. Chips in here now to Bailey Zobel, who's had a fair bit of the ball, and um, and uh, he takes the mark on the half-back flank. He uh, inboard to Matthew Blake, who plays on straight away. Goes long with the left foot. Interesting to see who's on the end of this one. The ball comes to ground, and it's Owen Henry who uh, runs past the ball, basically. But uh, Babui uh, tidies up and kicks out wide. The Whale Buxton uh, unable to take the mark, but butters up, takes possession, hand passes out to Adam Tip and Woody. Tip and Woody looking for Jeffrey Simon and finds him out in the right forward pocket for Tiwi. He chips in short, and the mark is Clever. taken by uh, John Papungamiri straight in front, 20 metres out. Took Jeffrey Simon a while to get it. There in the centre of the ground, almost uh, kick, overkicked the footy and uh, Waratah's got there a little bit late. But Timmy Mosquito, that one-on-one -on -one with Dion Moncara was 
was the way that Timmy plays the game. He just mm. reads the ball so well, pushes his opponent underneath and takes the mark. So Papunga Murray off about one and a half steps uh, on the left foot, kicks the goal, and uh, Timmy got two in a row, making a bit of a comeback now. The Bombers need that narrow, that margin back down now. The Bombers 6 5 41, uh, Tars 9 7 61. I think you mentioned four goals for the Tars this quarter. So it keeps the Bombers in the game, which it makes it exciting. You don't want to see a, a blowout, particularly in the second quarter, and then you're, uh, you don't want to see a dead rubber of a second half. Last two centre clearances have been held up a little bit because uh, Austin wanted Mary went in there. The bigger body sort of held the ball in in foe and he actually got that one out. And Abe Lank is, is still in the centre of the ground and the last two clearances have been won by Tiwi. So again, it's Simpson and Wilkins doing the ruck work. Umpire Mark Holford bounces the ball, bounces it very high. Wilkins up the top, but Simpson gets the, the tap this time. Ball comes to ground. It's hacked off the ground there cosmos poor jimmy gets a quick kick in but uh, goes nowhere and some clever work there by jordan gardner kicks in on the left foot but a big punch from behind by roy farmer sees the ball come out outside the 50 again and uh numbers on top of the ball and we'll have another ball up just entering time on in the second quarter of this round six tio ntfl clash at gardens oval wilkins punches forward this time but uh, it's Keranu who runs onto it. But the umpire, in the meantime, has played a holding free kick. And uh, looks like Adam Tipping Woody that'll uh, be the recipient this time at half back for Tiwi. The second time we've seen that happen for the Tars. I think it was Bugler before was lining up for a goal, and then something happened off the field and went Tiwi's way. So Ward Stewart took the uh, the mark from Tipping Woody, kicked out wide. Molyneux out there picks up. He's tackled, doesn't get his boot to the ball. The umpire says that's incorrect disposal, and. Uh, Tars go forward again, and Abe Ankers is on the end of that one inside 50, and uh, I don't think he'll be looking to what pass off, will he? Yeah, no, Abe uh, tends to think he's a bit of a goal kicker, and he rewards himself pretty well. But the kicking field position by kicking by both sides have been a bit inadequate today. Yeah. I just feel that they've either over kicked the ball or under kicked the ball, and when they do seem to kick the ball properly, it, there's no one there. So. Yeah. It's quite interesting that both sides are having that issue. Anchors now kicks long. Distance isn't a problem, and uh, it's straight through the middle. There's another one for Tars. Anchors kicks his second, one in each quarter. And uh, Waratahs get one back after Tiwi had kicked the previous two goals. So goal kickers for Waratahs so far in the quarter. Henry Karanur has got one. A Bank has just kicked that one. Strubance has got one, and Kim Cantilla has two and for Tiwi one each to Jeffrey Simon, Jared Cunningham and John Pungaramini. We were saying at the start, Strubance is pretty important in for Tars Wally. Mm. He uh, gives him strength up forward and uh, gives him a, a goal kicking option. He's, he seems to kick a few every time he plays. Yeah, his work rate adequate with Dave Bank as he sort of gets the ball across half back and next thing he's, he's sort of contesting the ball at centre half forward when the ball goes into the Waratahs forward line. Yep. Bounce again. Wilkins high again. Gets his hand to the ball this time. Coming off the wing was um, Port Jimmy, who get, won the free kick. His hand pass went to the feet of Molyneux. And uh, butter up hand pass missed the target. And Tars come forward again through Strubance. Picked up down there. And uh, Bugler has a chance on the left hand. Chip pass comes in. Cantilla takes the ball. Mark not paid, but uh, makes no difference because. Cantilla finishes with another goal. I think it's his third for the quarter, Wally. Yeah, that's correct, St uh, Stu. Um, so the ball out of the middle again, and Kim Cantilla finds himself uh, free and got some space and had a bit of pressure on and just kicked the ball over his left shoulder for that one. But Tiwi seemed to just give their forward, the Waratah forwards, a little bit too much space. Brigger was good in that. He was clean off the ground and strong in the contest against uh, Rodney Baird and got the ball out. Actually playing for the Morris Rioli Cup today, uh, which hasn't been played since 2012. But the last time that that was played for, uh, it was a high-scoring affair, but going Tiwi's way. 23-11, 149. Tars 15-12, 102. Before half-time, Waratah now at 73. So they're certainly looking at definitely a triple-digit game and perhaps up there with what the Tiwi's got last time we played for this cup with 149 points. Bounce again. Wilkins again up high. He's... Uh He's been uh, been in on the uh, on the ball for about uh, 
the last 10 or 15 minutes, Wally. I, uh, yeah, he's been very good. He's grown with confidence. The more game time he gets, Stewie, the, the better he seems to be because he's really, over the last couple of centre bounces, he's got up really high and palmed the ball and used yep. it really well to his uh, midfield. Yeah, he's been in there ever since he's talked about Arricchio. He was spending too much time on the ball. So uh, I think um, Ryan Ayres has got a direct line to us. Kick comes in from Strubance and uh, offline to the near side from Honor School. Uh, Chris Love to bring the ball back in for Tiwi. He uh, runs out of the square now. Kicks to the grandstand side. Marking contest there. No mark taken. Cunningham working a long way back from uh, the full forward line where he spent most of the day. Kicks into the centre, but uh, it's off target. And Timmy Mosquito mops up. He chips in forward. Looking for Henry Karanua and finds him about 40 out on uh, a pretty slight angle. And... Uh, I think he would go back and uh, and have a shot at from there. Well, we touched on the fact before we didn't want to see a blowout. It's certainly heading that way. It's been a long quarter. 25 minutes gone now. Waratah 74, Tiwi Bombers 41. It's to take the Tars to 80 before half time. Yeah, well, Tars kicked five in the first quarter. They've kicked six in this quarter, so uh, so they've kept the momentum up. Kiranua now kicks. Uh, it's going to be close to the goal line, but squeezes over the top. And another goal for Tars. So being the 10th goal for the quarter, you wow. sort of think it's uh, going to go about a 10 minutes over time mm. into extra time. And uh, Tiwi just uh, have hit that flat spot again. They're not attacking the ball. They're giving the forward line too much room. And and uh, the young Waratah Ruckman is doing a really good job in the centre. He seems to grow with confidence. Yeah, well, they're giving him, uh, giving him plenty of opportunity, which is good to see. So much so that uh, Riccio now is pl now playing deep in the forward line uh, as a target up forward for them. I don't think he's a forward, but more than a ruckman at this, uh, this point in the game. So Whale Buxton back in the middle now for Tiwi. And, uh, that ball's disputed. Dion Mankara takes it one hand, but he's tackled as he tries to kick. Umpire said he didn't get the boot to mm -hmm. ball. And so it's a free kick there to Jordan Gardner, who's had a pretty good day. He chips out wide here to Strubens. Oh, it's a Mitchell O'Donnell it was, actually. His kick was ordinary and uh, put Blake under pressure. He was tackled as he took the ball, tried to dispose of it, and Roy Farmer rewarded with the holding the ball free kick. Kicks towards the centre, but uh, Dion Mankara is under some pressure there. But um, picked up by Tambling. Hand passes forward. One Ameria, quick hand pass to Munt to uh, Mon Mankara. Mankara kicks from 45 out and straight through the middle. So a uh, couple of errors, but uh, they, were, they were smart enough to tidy it up and, and get it through for their fourth goal for the quarter. Yeah, Roy Farmer did really well um, in that instance. Moved the ball a little bit slow to the centre of the ground, but Tiwi sort of had enough numbers there to get it forward and really quick thinking by Austin Warren and Mary with his hands to give the running Dion Mankara an open shot at goal. A really quick give, uh, almost too quick to see. So Riccio's back in the middle now. and uh, Wasn't young... that quick, Stu, if you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I got the monitor right here, Wally. Oh, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one goal for the uh, the Bombers, and they put Riccio back up in the ruck again. And uh, oh. Dion Mankara trying to leapfrog through uh, there, but he's tackled as he came through. That was like watching UFC, that tackle. <laughs> wow. So Riccio in front gets his hand to the ball. Comes down, tambling this time. But uh, free kick just as the siren goes for half time. Matty, a uh, pretty entertaining quarter, lots of goals, and uh, there's a bit of a bit of a gap between them but we know what TV can do when they get a run on well we saw that just before with that uh, when they burst out and got that goal pretty quick there but of course it is half time here at gardens over waratah 12 8 80 uh, leading the tiwi bombers 7 5 47 
ladies and gentlemen. Half time, the men's Premier League. What a great game so far. It's a hot day, we want to thank the umpires, obviously, who are uh, almost as poor, I think. But now we've got some entertainment for you. Our patron, Michael Gunner, wants to have all the kids involved in a mini league footy game. So that's what we're going to do. Joshy Lawrence, who's our junior coordinator at the Waratah Footy Club, is going to get them all together, hopefully at some stage, so they can have a kick and a giggle. And this is what foot, our football future is all about, getting our juniors involved, and this is what you will see at the Waratah home games, we will be putting on mini league games with our juniors and any other team that wants to join us so we can get our kids playing football in front of big crowds and the mums and dads here to support. That's what it's all about. We are a family club. Michael is the king of the kids and this is what he's putting on for us today.
and our Chief Minister, our Pope, and Michael Gunning will present that at the end of the day. Thank you. Welcome back to Gardens Oval in round six of the TIO NTFL Men's Premier League where it's Waratah versus the Tiwi Bombers and at half time Tars 12-8-80 leading the Tiwi Bombers 7-5-47. Matt Hepworth, Stu Davis and Wally Gallio in well not quite the commentary box this afternoon gentlemen we're uh, out in the nosebleed section here at Gardens Oval Wally. That's a beautiful day in Darwin, beautiful day at Gardens Oval, one of the uh, better grounds in the Northern Territory. Traga Park would be my favourite, Stu. Can't remember too long ago, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, it's still there. <laughs> Waratahs are doing well at halftime of this game, and uh, they shut down the Tiwi on forward going early in that quarter and controlled the corridor and uh, ended up kicking seven goals for the quarter to Tiwi's four. <laughs> Here we go, ball up in the air. Umpire gives them the all clear. Stu Davis, take us away. So, Whale Bruxton and uh, Aricho in ruck. Whale Bruxton takes possession, gets a hand pass out. Heenan gets a kick forward for Tiwi. Looking for Wanamiri down there. Picks it up, first grab, wheels around the corner. But just offline again for a minus score. Pretty quick action there from Tiwi, getting the ball out of the centre and a, a shot on goal, but uh, not the result they were looking for. Clean and quick, the best way that Tiwi can know how to play. So Mosquito bringing the ball in from fullback now. Kicks to the outer side. Whale Buxton in front, can't take the mark. Mauricio tackles him when he didn't have the ball. Umpire signalling the, wrong, the way. wrong way, yeah. Yep. So uh, Whale Buxton will. Uh, We'll take the free kick with uh, Aricio standing right on the paint of the 50 metre arc. Just kicks it up towards the top of the goal square there. Big fly there, almost a mark to Cunningham, off hands. It's a goal to Tiwi and that's kicked by, uh, I'm trying to pick it up, I think it's uh, Harley Purantanamiri. Well, we knew when the, uh, at half-time the Bombers had work to do and that's exactly how they're going to claw themselves back into the uh, game. Two goals within the first minute, gentlemen. Yeah, it was quite well done. You know, they were clean in the, at the start of this quarter. They were very clean in the middle of the ground and mm -hmm. they got the ball moving forward and then they paired off very well in the forward line and then a long kick to the top of the square and Harley Perintatameri does what he does best, clean and finish as well. We saw glimpses of that, that pace and that, that magic that Tiwi's known for, but uh, first minute and a half of the third quarter, well, it's all going their way at the moment. Well, they need it too. They're coming from a fair way back. But um, ball comes out through uh, Carroll with a hand pass over the top. Back to Aricio. Carroll again is going to be tackled here and uh, doesn't get his kick away. The umpire says that's a free kick to Tiwi, who play on. Advantage is paid. Tambling running inside. 50 has a shot on goal. It's uh, swinging back, but not enough, and uh, a minor score again. It's all Tiwi here, Wally. Yeah, it is. They're really well. They're hitting the ball. They're playing in front. They're pairing off really quickly. And it's just a matter of sustaining the uh, the onslaught now. So Mosquito goes straight up the middle, finds Daniel Simpson at centre-half back, unmarked. And uh, he goes back now, looking to kick to the outer wing. And uh, over the top, uh, almost... Mark there, but it's uh, Tars who come away through anchors again. Cantilla's got some space out on the outer half forward flank. He's looking to pass off, chips into Bugler, who's unmarked. And Bugler takes the mark about 40 out, slight angle, kicking towards the northern end of, uh, of Gardens Oval. Um, 
probably a little bit closer from where he kicked that goal after the siren at quarter time, Matty. Mm. Well, am I wrong in saying Bugler normally plays on the back line? Yeah, Bugler's been renowned to play on the back line, but he's always touted himself as a good forward. Yeah, so he's been at the front all day today. Ryan has probably got tired of hearing the same message, so he played him up forward. Yeah. Bugler's kick on the way. It's out to the left a little bit, swings back through, and uh, that's a goal, a second for Bugler, and and Tars get that, uh, peg that one back that uh, T we got early in the quarter. Yeah, it was well done by A Bank. Has got the uh, ball in the middle of the ground and had great vision seeing Karanua, uh, Karanua yeah. by himself out on that far side flank and then back inside to Justin Bugler. Good movement of the football from Waratahs, nice and clean. Yep, and, uh, and Karanua was always looking for an option rather than looking to blaze it in forward, so uh, it was just a matter of someone freeing up and Bugler was the man. Well, it's one of his best traits, I think, Karen. When he's not in kicking distance, he wants to get the ball moving or he's looking to play on. It's, it's a real credit to him. Empire just uh, checking we're all clear on the 666 rule, which we are. Umpire Holford's been bouncing the ball beautifully today. This one's no exception and uh, gives the Ruckman an even contest at it. Ball comes to ground. Running through there. Jeez, the Tiwi's yeah. tackling pressure today has been ferocious. A heavy tackle on Carroll, but it uh, was deemed to be illegal. And uh, Tars forward again. Bugler off the ground here, picks up, kicks it, chips across towards centre half forward over the top booth, unable to hold on to the mark. Minkolk first on the ground to uh, take possession. And now uh, ball's hacked forward by Jordan Gardner, but that's too far for Karanua and out of bounds on the full in the left forward pocket. You touched on that tackle uh, being illegal before, Stu. That's the thing is when you've got that ferocious tackling pressure, you've got to make sure you do it properly, though. It's all well and good to lay hard tackles, but if the free's going the other way, it's not worth it. That's right. So, in short here to Richard Purantatamiri. He's short again to Roy Farmer on the half-back flank for Tiwi. Farmer. Goes long down the line to the wing in front of the grandstand here. Ball spills over the top, nicely taken by Bailey Zobel. Finds some space and hits up Brendan Munkolk. Munkolk drives it into the top of the goal square. Two we seem to be in advantage, but Struben's over the back and uh, kicks a pretty easy goal from the goal square in the end, but uh, made the position, read it off hands, and uh, he's got a goal in every quarter. So Waratahs in the last couple of minutes of did what Tiwi did in the first couple of minutes of this quarter by being hard at the football, leading their opponents to the ball, and have turned the scoreboard over. Yep, and uh, and just uh, have kicked goals with both the opportunities that they've had going forward, which uh, wasn't the pattern of play early in the game, but um, they're they're, uh, they're pretty well on target since quarter time. Tars. Without calling the game too early, Tars will be happy with the position they're in at the moment. We know they haven't won a game, or did in round three, but controversially stripped of that win. So uh, uh, looking on track for their first win of the season. Umpire Holford again. Comes in, bounces straight up and down again. The reach out early. Goes underneath the ball. This time it's Owen Henry streaming through. Kicks inside the square and finds Austin Wanamary. About 40 out directly in front. So uh, pretty clean again, Wally, and uh, and good use of the ball. Yeah, Austin, one of Mary's been uh, very good for him this year. He's been one of their consistent forwards and really leads from the front. Gives his all every week, and he's got sure hands, and he's, he's a great thinker of the game and organises people in front of him. And Owen Henry with uh, good clean hands and a lot of pace there and a good finish to have Oz... Austin Wanamary kicking from about 48 metres from goal. Goal the kick looks pretty good. No problem there at all. So uh, it ties it up again for the quarter. Two goals apiece. And, uh, and all on the back of some clean work out of the middle. Makes the game a lot easier for the forwards if the ball's coming out cleanly and getting in quickly. What that makes it 31 points of difference, Stu? Yes. Yep, which is uh, which is where we were at at half time, precisely. So, uh, well, he's surprised to read. I, uh, Aussie Wanamiri actually only playing 31 games um, for uh, the Melbourne Demons in the AFL. He made quite an impact in those 31 games, though, didn't he? Yeah, they were they were pretty high energy games. He, mm. he uh, had a lot of hamstring and back injuries 
or back soreness and led to hamstring injuries a lot of the time he was there but when he played he was a sensation to watch yeah. to me again out of the middle Dion Mankara this time drives it to the goal square oh. bent the leap, uh, but not really a realistic <laughs> opportunity of getting his hands on that one and uh, that's the way umpire John Rawlsthorne seen it and uh, free kick will be paid to uh, Zobel down there in the d defensive goal square. It did look good, but <laughs> unrealistic, I feel. <laughs> Arricio in front. Uh, umpire said he's had enough of that. I'll pay that mark. It's pretty, pretty strong in the contest there. And uh, obviously... Um, yeah, someone said something to the umpire. Yeah. Yeah. And so we march down the field 50 metres. Um, well, Bruxton better be careful. He's not getting in the way here under the new rules. Another one could be paid pretty quickly. Yeah, I thought that uh, he probably did infringe. He's supposed to be right out of the way, isn't he? Yeah, that's Looks right. Very Front nice. or side on. Yep. yep. Ball spills uh, free here, and Jared Cunningham's on the end of it. Takes a bounce and passes across to Dion Mankara on that trusty left foot. And he's gone for Tiwi. He's pretty excited about it too. And why wouldn't he be? It, uh, it gives Tiwi another shot. They're, uh, they're still hanging around. They're not giving it away. And uh, when, they, when they do get it cleanly and do go forward, they, uh, they look like they could be anything, but uh, Tars have been pretty good in steadying in reply. Yeah, Dion Mankara was, uh, you know, he was at the centre bounce and then worked the ball forward and then got on the end of it from Jared Cunningham. And if they can uh, continue to maintain their pace, Waratahs just haven't got the speed or the leg power to go with them when the ball hits the ground like that. So, uh, ball up again. We've got um, we've got the two big men in the middle again. The two primary ruckmen for either side. Another beautiful bounce. Ball hits the deck. No one can get it out cleanly. This time it's picked up by Blake. Who uh, hand passes to Zobel off the half-back line. Back to Blake and Blake kicks forward. But uh, Tiwi seem to have the numbers there. Although Minkolk comes in to make a contest of it. Picked up there by Rodney Baird, hand passes in front of Roy Farmer, but uh, the ball trickles away and out of bounds. Hey, Bankers and Waratahs are taking their pun on just uh, punt on keeping A Bankers forward and Strubens forward at the moment. See, they'll be injected in the middle of the grounds sooner rather than later if we get another goal. Mm. Ruck contest again. Mankara running through, paddles the ball in front of him. Takes possession now and runs away with a couple of bounces. Kicks back in towards centre half forward. He's decked after he kicked the ball. And uh, the umpire's paid a free kick down the ground. <laughs> there was a lot going uh, on there, Jano, wasn't there? They, uh, well, the free kick was there. I mean, he got pushed in the back after he got, I mean, he dove a little bit, but I mean, the definite double movement and pushing the back after he kicked the football. and. Jared Cunningham was keen to get another goal by taking was, the advantage. It was but, actually uh, well umpired jo John Rawlstorn because the ball hit the ground and no one actually ran onto it. So yep. he blew time on when the ball wasn't in anybody's control. Yep, yep. There was a bit of a bit of delay before yep. Jared picked it up and ran on with it. So it's uh, it's Aussie Wanamiri again. A bit, uh, bit more of an angle, but nothing to worry about. And uh, we saw from his previous kick, the distance shouldn't be a problem at all. Big Harrison Keeley on the mark. It's been good for Tars this year. Just off a couple of steps, one Mary, but uh, that's good enough. And it's another goal to Tiwi. So they've come out on fire. They've kicked the last three now and four for the quarter. All of a sudden, the margin down to just 20 points. Waratah 14 9 93. Tiwi Bombers 11 7 73. 12 minutes gone in the third quarter. Round six uh, of the TIO NTFL Men's Premier League. On a beautiful Saturday, sunny afternoon. Gentlemen, Mindle Beach behind us. So you get glimpses of that sea breeze every now and then, but otherwise, it's still a hot, sticky, humid day. Perfect Which conditions for NTFL football. That's what we like to see. Hot and sticky and uh, a lot of goals. Yep. Yeah, high scoring affair. Yeah, so it's back to almost three goals now and I'm sure Ryan Ayres isn't panicking but uh, remember last week they were only a goal down against Nycliffe and got blown away a bit in the second mm, half so we'll um, yeah. be ho hoping to uh, arrest that pretty soon. Mauricio pretty easily this time wins the tap. Umpire Joel Morrison says there's a free kick out there. 
and uh, Brody Carroll is the recipient. Drives the ball in long now, looking down there for Bugler, who's pushed underneath it. Play on's the call, comes over the back, Roy Farmer's there, picks up the ball, fends off, and hand passes over the top to Luff, who's tackled, ball spills free. Umpire says that he was held after slung after he uh, got yeah, rid of the ball. Yeah, held just a little bit too long after he got rid of the football, and free kick for Tiwi across their half-back line. So, uh, Luff back there. I didn't say Troy Luff, did I, Wally? No, it didn't. Not yet. <laughs> Ball comes forward now. Some good work out there by Aranta. Gets uh, Waratahs back in possession of the ball. Comes forward to Kim Cantilla. Spilt the mark, but recovered. Hand passes over the top to Blake. Back to Cantilla, running in front of the scoreboard. Kicks long into the forward line. And a strong mark there by Strubens. About 20 metres out. As I said, a pretty pretty important player for Tars. He's, uh, I think he's tied up with Coburg down in the VFL, Wally. Yeah, he sure is, and uh, for his height, he's really good overhead, and that's one of the one of his mainstays in the VFL. That he, uh, when the when he goes forward or when he plays back, he's really strong in the air for his size of player. He'd be about 178, 79, and uh, and finishes well as he uh, puts through his fourth goal. I think uh, from memory, the last time he played, he probably kicked four goals in the losing side as well. So uh, a really important player for him. Yeah, he's uh, a consistent player. And even on a bad day, he's still, he's still beneficial for any team that he plays in. He just uh, knows where to go. He knows where to run. And he opens up. If he's not getting the football, he knows how to open up space for other players around him, especially A Bankers in the centre. When they're both in the ground, they work really well to the centre of the ground at centre bounces or around stoppages. He works really well with Abe's. So the two main ruckmen are having a spell. So uh, Jordan Wilkins back in there for Tars and Nigel Simpson for Tiwi. Wilkins has uh, been getting off the ground pretty well. Again, gets his hand to this one, but Molyneux in there cleans it up for Tiwi, drives them forward, runs past the two players there. Uh, and uh, Anchors is first to recover, gets a hand pass out to O'Donnell. O'Donnell kicks long, looking for Kiranua. He's forced under the ball, almost a mark there, but play on's the call. Hand pass comes out, and Michael Dunn kicks out wide in front of Dion Makara, who takes the mark out on this, uh, this grandstand wing. Drives in the forward, half the forward 50, and it's the big fella who hasn't gone off the ground for a rest. He's gone down to the forward line for a rest. Liam Whale Buxton, and um, he'll have a shot on a 45 degree angle, only uh, about 20 or 25 metres out. And the Ruckman are having a fair share of the crack at goals today, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, well, uh, we're right behind this one, so we'll get a good view of it, but um, let's hope he uh, has a bit more success than his counterpart had from a similar area last yeah. quarter. Must have went and Mary just hit the interchange bench for a well earned rest. And uh, that one looks like it's swinging back pretty well. Beautiful it's a good kick. finish. And another goal to Tiwi. We're, uh, we're racking up the goals here. It's, uh, it's a pretty high scoring affair. So another goal kicker on the board for Tiwi. What a cracking game of footy though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really snapped up. And, the, you know, since the half time, we're pretty, I was critical of the way they were using the football yeah, and, both and teams, the fumbleness yeah. they had. And yep over kicking or under kicking and not kicking field position and you know they've come out half time and both sides are kicking the ball like you know how would you like to be playing full forward with down one car with his left foot just <laughs> he just waved the bucks and said you just come to me and i'll just yep. drop it in front of you yep. and, and that's what happened and bucks and finished off for the tiwi bombers yeah bounce again wilkins with the left hand but uh he's Counterpart picks up out of the ruck, did some good work there, drives the ball forward, but uh, Tars have the opportunity out in front. It's uh, Bailey Zabel who's tackled and uh, gets a hand pass away. Tim Mon Monkara, good tackle, lets him know about it. <laughs> but, uh, it's gone over the boundary line, and we'll have a boundary throw in. <laughs> he gave him a five metre head start too, and still <laughs> tracked him down, that's what he's probably telling him. <laughs> Here's a boundary throw in over the back, Simpson. Empire's found a free kick. And uh, it'll go to Molyneux on the bottom of the pack there. He kicks in, looking for the big fella again, Whale Buxton, and he marks out in front of Keeley. So uh, 
Angle's a little bit tighter this time, but uh, distance isn't a problem. And uh, he coped pretty well with his previous shot at, previous mm. shot at goal, so he'll be, uh, be looking, looking to kick two in a row, which I'm um, sure he probably hasn't done too much in his lifetime. Uh, Roy Farmer's come off for uh, Michael Dunn, and Tiwis are really using their interchange bench now. And I think Roy Farmer's been one of their consistent players down back today. He's, he's marshaled his troops really well, and he's, he's really stuck to his guns and, and used the ball pretty well. So Wale well, Buxton kicks again, and no problem at all. Probably not the, not the sweetest-looking style, Wally, but uh, pretty effective with those two, that's for sure. Yeah, he ran straight at the goals and put it up there for the little breeze that there is, and it seems to be favouring that end by the look of the umpire's goal flag that, uh, that it is favouring the city end of the ground. Really pleased for Roy Farmer, Wally. He was in the wilderness for a few years, I think. He, yeah. uh, as, as a young fella, he went down to South Australia, spent some time with Norwood, and... Uh, Looked like he could have been anything, but you know, as uh, as is the case, he wanted to come home and um, played some footy with Tui, but went missing for a couple of years. But he's been back and playing yeah, pretty he, consistently. He went and lived with his partner in Catherine for a while with family down there, and and then came back and living on the island playing for Tiwi Bombers again. And he's a uh, he's a good service yeah. man for the Tiwi Bombers, and he plays really well down back for them. Now the high bounce in the middle must be pretty hard in that centre square area. Mm -hmm. Adam Tip and Woody gets the kick forward for Tiwi. In front, McCarthy unable to take the mark. Hand pass comes back. Bugle looks like he's gone back now. McCarthy hand passes to Ar 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 Aranta, and uh, he was looking for Brady Carroll, but uh, unable to take it. So I think the move's been made with um, with Bugler going going back. down back. Uh, Strubens has gone forward, and A Bankers and both Brady Carroll are on the ball now. Yep. So he said, Wally, one more goal, and they'll uh, yep, swap it up a little bit. Wilkins gets double-handed tap down to Anchors, shrugs the tackle, kicks it forward a few metres, picked up across there by Ward Stewart, who's tackled over the boundary line, and uh, we'll have a boundary throw in on the outer wing. All of a sudden, that margin back to just 14 points. Waratah 99, Tiwi 85, 20 minutes gone in the third quarter here at Gardens Oval. That breeze has picked up a little bit, Matty. Yeah, my paperwork keeps flying away <laughs> nearly. <laughs> That's a good indication, so, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> it is. Play on's the call. Tip and Woody was looking for a free kick, but uh, not paid. Hand pass comes out. Oh, oh, uh, oh, wow, what a tackle. Evaded the first one pretty easily, but got uh, got picked up. O'Donnell hand passes across to Arata. Arata kicks forward inside the 50. Baird worked underneath it. Comes to anchors on the end of the hand pass there. He kicks and... Uh, no problem finishing for there for, from there for Abe Anchors. Running on to, uh, towards goal from about 20 or 25 out. And uh, a much needed one for Tars. Well, we are sitting in the grandstand and I think Tars fans expressed that quite clearly, how needed that was and how happy they are with that. Takes them over to triple digits now. 16-9-105, Tiwi Bombers 13-7-85. Takes Stops the lead the... out to 19 points. Mm. First to 100 wins done is normally the case, isn't it, Wally? Yeah, Abe Anchors and Strubitz, uh probably their better players today and they've kicked seven goals of those 16 so wow it's not a bad return and Cantilla's kicked three and Justin Bugler's kicked two so I think first to 100 wins when it's uh, in the later stages of the fourth quarter but of course we're still in the third quarter mm. here and a long way to go so balls thrown up this time and uh, Brody Carroll runs onto it O'Donnell Tidies up, hand passes to Carroll, kicks running backwards, pretty good effort that, and uh, goes to the advantage of Anchors. Anchors chips in short, looking for Blake, but that's punched away by Rodney Baird, and over the boundary line, Rodney Baird in his first season with Tiwi, he's got a family connection at Tiwi Wally, is that right? Yeah, correct, yeah. He, he did really well then, Stu, he uh, left Strubance and made a great decision to go and impact that contest. Yep. Boundary throw in, Aranta in front, gets the tap. O'Donnell hand passes forward, anchors on the end of it. Hooks over the shoulder towards the top of the goal square. Strudence there, Baird over the top, punches. The ball spills free. Oh, Cantilla pushed into the goal post and kicks it out of the air as he's done so. I and, uh, got the goal out of that as well. It was a pretty impressive effort. He was, uh, he was airborne, basically, as he threw his foot at the ball. As, and being pushed into the goal post with oh yeah boy let's hope we can catch this on the replay pretty good centering kick by anchors to the top of the goal square and um 
Yeah, throwing her on the end, taps it forward. There we go. As he's bang, as he's uh, throwing his leg at it to kick it, he's pushed, but a uh, pretty impressive goal. So the last three goals, the Abe Ankers has had assist in two and kicked one himself. So yeah. Abe is back in the middle, and uh, Brady Carroll's there, Richo's there, and Tars are on the march again. Yeah, and uh, and Mitch O'Donnell's in there as well. He's a he's a pretty strong in and under player, so they've almost got their A team in the middle there right now. Richo early, but gets the hand to the ball. O'Donnell again at the bottom of the pack. He's tackled, almost threw that one out, but uh, umpire said that's okay. And uh, now it's wrapped up, and we'll have a ball up. Simpson coming in off the wing was tackled pretty heavily there. Richo gets the tap down to O'Donnell. Good left hand hand pass out to Carroll. Oh. Doesn't see what's coming from behind. And uh, Tiwi take the advantage. Owen Henry kicks it in forward. Looking there for Cunningham. Ball runs past him. Tip and Woody on the left foot. Kicks back towards goal. But uh, boundary umpire said that's gone over on the full. And Tim Mosquito will bring it in for Waratah. Touched on it before, but the uh, the Bombers tackling pressure at the moment. Ferocious. Yeah, I think that Waratahs are starting to pick up in that area too since, mm. you know, TB kicked those four goals and... They've come back in the game because of their contest contested ball and they're starting to win that hard ball, just like uh, Brody Carroll. And, yeah, and O'Donnell again got it out to him, so o O'Donnell's doing lots of the grunt work at the bottom of the packs. Somewhere that we um, that we often see Sam Godden, but he's uh, we haven't seen him for the last couple of weeks. No, no. Don't know what the story is there. But... Uh, Ball's over the fence on the outer side of Gardens Oval, so we're just waiting for it to be retrieved. We're uh, 25 minutes into this third quarter now, so uh, players will be looking for a breather at three-quarter time and set to go again in the last quarter. Richo gets the tap again, and uh, O'Donnell again kicks the ball forward. Ball's uh, on the ground down there. Booth gets a hand pass to Anchors, loses his footing, comes back to Booth, who's tackled and continues to be tackled after the ball's gone free. And uh, umpire Mark Holford said, you can't hold him that long, I'm going to give him a free kick. So, Dom Booth from inside the centre square, forward half for Waratah. Kick comes forward, the uh, young fellow there, Wilkins, couldn't take the mark. Ball comes out to Matthew Cantilla. Tiwi, but uh, on the ground, Carroll picks up a quick hand pass back to Blake now on the outside of the left foot, but uh, waiting in the goal square. It's tidied up, and uh, kick comes out to Luff on the halfback flank. He goes back in towards the middle where Cosmos Port Jimmy uh, under pressure from Arata, but he's helped by Heenan who picks up, hooks around the corner, and Bugle will be the first there taking the intercept mark doing what we've seen him do for a number of years from that back line and uh, kicks wide looking for O'Donnell. He's under some pressure here but manages to get the hand pass back to Mosquito and Mosquito kicks out to Rakawasa on the outer wing. Haven't called him much today. He chips back inside to Minkok in the, the, basically the centre of the ground. Minkok switches again to this side of the centre square where James Arata takes the mark and steadies things up. Uh, kicks long towards half forward. Ball's punched away. No one attempting the mark there. Minkalk on the end of it. is tackled as soon as he took possession of the ball. A couple of others come in over the top. And uh, it'll be a ball up just adjacent to the centre square in uh, Waratah's attacking half. Arichio this time, but uh, loses that tap. And... Uh, Good work from Tiwi. Owen Henry runs onto it, drives into the full forward line, but uh, Bugler duck, backing back with the ball, makes it a two-on-one contest, and Mosquito's able to tidy up and uh, chips out wide to Rakawasa again, who's got some space out on the half-back flank, takes a bounce, looking for what he can do now, goes short and finds Keeley out on the wing. Keeley now drives in low, out towards the half forward flank, Roy Farmer back on the ground out there is first there. Cantilla tries to flick it up, and uh, umpire Mark Holford's not impressed with that, says that's a throw. And so it's uh, Kim Cantilla who will take the free kick. 
He chips in short to Keranua, who's all by himself. About uh, 20 out on a pretty acute angle, but uh, no one around him didn't get back quickly enough to uh, to pick up Tiwi there. And Keranua looks like he'll take a shot at goal. He is a left footer, so that side probably favours him. It's quite funny that Keranua came on from the interchange. Babui went to him and just followed him all the way down. And then when they got the square, Babui dropped off and Keranua ended up with the football. And that's a pretty good finish from Keranua. And uh, after all the, all the work that Tiwi's done, it's uh, I think it's six goals each this quarter now. So, um, so Tars have, uh, have uh, really bunkered down and... and, uh, and wrestled the contest back their way and so uh, yep. they're back to where they were at half time and be pretty happy with uh, a five goal lead or thereabouts at three quarter time if they can hold that we're uh, we're now almost 29 minutes into this third quarter so you would think there's not too much longer to go yeah they've worked their uh, Tiwi had the better first part of this quarter by using the interchange bench and their rotations and I think that Waratahs have probably uh, done very well in holding anchors and Brady Carroll and Strubens forward and it's really worked for them and Arricio's done most of the ruck work this quarter, Stu. Yeah, yeah. So Arricio again gets the tap this time. It's taken by Molyneux in there, but Mitt O'Donnell again. He's uh, it's been terrific for them in this third quarter since he's gone in the middle. Strubens, uh, clever work out there. Wheels around, kicks towards goal. And uh, go up, I said, that's good enough for me. So Strubens kicks his fifth. And uh, Waratahs on a march with four in a row. Yeah, Waratahs uh, did really well. They muscled the ball out of the middle. O'Donnell got the ball out of the middle again, and he's been very good for Waratahs this quarter. And Roy Farmer just uh, had Strubens corralled and just slipped over at the crucial moment. Touched on before, Stuart. It's just all that work that the Bombers did. They got it back down to that 14-point margin. Yeah, but you can't sit back and be happy with yourself, no, can no, you? No, you right? can't. Especially no. when you're coming from behind. So. Yeah. Now blown out to a good 30 odds, close to 40 odd points. Up by Joel Morrison to uh, get the great game underway again. Mr. Cricket. Throws the ball up. Riccio clearly wins that tap. Ball comes back to him, kicks it forward, and Luff underneath this one should tidy up. Unable to take the mark, but uh, butters up and kicks towards the middle of the ground where Molyneux's unattended. He can't take the mark, but uh, recovers. Hand pass comes forward now to uh, Tippity Woody just as Tiwi were uh, about to make another attacking move. The siren goes and that ends the uh, third quarter, Matty. It's been another high scoring one at three quarter time. Waratah 19-9, 123, leading the Tiwi Bombers 13-7-85. Can the Tiwi Bombers claw their way back or will Waratah hold on for their first win of the season? We'll find out next.
Welcome back to Gardens Oval where Waratah are taking on the Tiwi Bombers and at three quarter time Waratah 19-9 123 leading the Tiwi Bombers 13-7-85. Gentlemen the big question is is can Tars hold on for their first win of the season Wally Gallio? Yeah I think they can Matt they've uh, they've shown that uh, when they've been challenged they've answered the call and they've answered it really well and through their their midfield with O'Donnell and Ankers and Brady Carroll and then Struvens up forward's been really good and their back line has just been relentless and they've dropped uh, Duke, Google Black to play the loose man defence. Fourth quarter underway, Stu Davis with the call. So uh, Aricho and Ruck, the uh, the big fella for Tiwi's not in the Ruck contest to start this quarter. He's down forward, Stu. Yeah. He's a goal kicker now, Wally. <laughs> Isn't he? O'Donnell under there again, gets a hand pass out wide to Carroll. Carroll drives it in forward and uh, Struvance again on the end of that one. Uh, pretty easily out in front of Roy Farmer. Is he lining up for six, Wally? Struvance? He's, yes, he's lining up for his six. I just think it's a poor matchup for Roy Farmer, I think. Stu, he needs yeah. to go to probably the third, fourth best forward so he can have some damage for Tiwi on the way back out. Struvance has been really good. He's strong. And he works really hard to uh, position to where they kick the ball to him. So Struvance from uh, out pretty wide on the outer side there. And that was uh, was always going to be inside. And so uh, a minor score only to Tars. And I think according to my records, they kicked seven straight in the third quarter. So uh, they sure the first miss for a while. Dion Mankara kicking in this time. Those uh, chips into Rodney Baird, who was looking to hand pass off, but uh, Dion was uh, rounded up pretty quickly by Kiranua. So goes back and kicks along. And now Anchors gets on the end of a hand pass, drives it inside forward 50 again. Rodney Baird, first back, gets a hand pass across to Dunn. Dunn out wide and uh, now Luff. Brings uh, Tiwi out of defence, but uh, Mark couldn't be held. O'Donnell gets another hand pass to Anchors. Anchors across to Gardner. His kick smothered and uh, rolls forward about 15 metres before it goes out of bounds. Just on the intersection of the 50 metre line with the boundary line on the right half forward flank for Waratah. Aricho in front, taps the ball forward. O'Donnell in and under again, forces the ball forward. Ball bounces around uh, through a few pairs of hands and uh, another strong tackle. Pretty good by Aricho there, the ruckman. He's, uh, he's not afraid to get in and do the work mm. underneath as well. It's just coming back up when you're that tall, isn't it? <laughs> Throw him. Doesn't favour him this time and uh, Owen Henry taps it out. And uh, Richard Poon Tatamiri gets a free kick for holding there on the half back line. Looks to hand pass there, but doesn't. Chips in short across to Molino. Molino now plays in short into the middle to John Papungamiri. He goes out wide to Michael Dunn. Michael Dunn looking for Wanamiri, but Abe Anchors coming back, uh, cuts it off, picks up, and his kicks uh, over the head of O'Donnell. And uh, everyone else out there, and Owen Henry sees it roll over the boundary line in front of him. No bankers has turned into a complete midfielder, but if there's one mm. thing that you could probably say is he struggles a little bit, he turns the footy over just a little bit too much sometimes. Yeah. Riccio flicks this one over the back, but uh, two we are onto that. And uh, hold it up to on Mankara now, works his way through traffic. Kicks down towards half forward, but uh, ever reliable, reliable Timmy Mosquito read it well and chopped it off. He chips in short to Bugler now at centre half back. Waratah certainly have got a message to try and aim the corridor because every time they get the ball across half back, their first instant is to go inside. Mm. Yep. Bugler switched again out wide to Keeley, who had a couple of bounces. Now nowhere to go. Back inside to Rakawasa, running through the centre circles. Kicks long into the forward line. Ball comes off hands. Bounces out in front of Struvance, who can't keep it in play. And we'll have a boundary throw in next to the left hand behind post at the city end of the ground, the end to which Waratah are kicking in this final quarter.
Young fellow Wilkins over the top, got his hands to the ball. Rodney Baird picks up for Tiwi, drives him outside the 50, but only as far as Ankers, who uh, cleverly plays on quickly on the left foot. In towards goal, but uh, I'm not sure if he was actually having a shot or trying to centre it, but it's drifted through for a minor score. Well, you touched on before that instruction to go through the corridor rather than down on the wing. I always find that a fascinating style of play, given that you're just working through so much more traffic on a ground like Gardens Oval that's quite narrow as well. It's a, an interesting move to make. Yeah, it's not a bad one. I mean, it's high, high risk for high reward, yeah. I suppose, the old cliche line, but it's, it's certainly worked for Waratahs when they've uh, been behind on the scoreboard. Jeffrey Simon uh, recovers best out of that marking contest and uh, kicks the ball forward off the ground, but Bugler comes through strongly, takes clean possession and hand passes to Moore, who uh, hand passes out wide to Mosquito, who cleverly taps it away from Michael Dunn before taking possession and chipping in. No one really wanted to go for that for Tars, so um, uh, Nigel Simpson said thanks very much, I'll take it, and uh, kicks it forward. But uh, some pretty clever work there by Keeley, sees the ball come out wide. And uh, Zobel hand passes over the top to Bugler again, who's uh, getting a fair bit of the ball now that he's gone down back. McCarthy comes through strongly here, but uh, a free kick there to John Papungamari as he, uh, he went to his knees and was tackled high. Drives in looking for the big fellow, Whale Buxton, but uh, Keeley's with him all the way and uh, prevents him from taking the mark. Bugler again out of defence. Close to the boundary line this side and uh, Bigger Riccio reaches up, gets a hand to it under some pressure and uh, sees the ball tapped out over the line for a boundary throw in right on the centre wing in front of us here in the um, in the grandstand area. I tell you we need to try and get more players to the contest. You know, Thomas Jeffrey Simon was one on four and then the big fella was one on three there. Yeah. Riccio double fists it forward this time. Minkulk taps it forward. Struvance with strength takes possession on the left foot, kicking forward. And I think Rodney Baird got a hand to it before it went into the post anyway for a minor score. But uh, Tiwi not making any inroads into into this lead. And we're, um, what are we, nearly seven minutes mm, into the quarter. Time's getting against them now. Kick out wide where Ward Stewart takes the mark, chips into Michael Dunn inside the centre square. He plays on quickly and uh, has a running player out wide there in Cosmos Port Jimmy, who marks in front of Minkok, but nothing to go to, so slows it up. Now uh, kicks again down that that outer flank, but uh, not many not many jumpers there for Tiwi for for him to go to and. Well, Min you have a, have a look in the back place, Dewey. They have got one, two, three, four, five, six of their mm. mid. You know, they've got all their midfielders stuck in between where the ball is and where it's come from. So yep. I think they get caught in between play, and I think they're just a little bit tired at the moment. Yep, the, uh, the running back's always harder than the running forward, isn't it? Mm. Riccio hand passes over the top. Cosmos Port Jimmy looked to be tackled without the ball there. And uh, umpire Mark Holford seen it that way. So Port Jimmy in front of the scoreboard. Chips in short, looking for Dion Mankara. Unable to take it there. Rakawasa does well to get it back to Zobel. Zobel and uh, Taz bring it out to the wing. It was all Tiwi out there, but uh, they weren't able to get their hands on it before it went out of bounds. A few minutes ago, we saw uh, the Taz Don Booth come off a little bit sore after a, a, another clash with one of the Bombers players. He got up pretty quickly, but certainly uh, limped off, looking a bit worse for wear. That was Don Booth from the Taz. It's a contact sport, Marty. Mm. There's the boundary throw in. And uh, Sipson again wins the tap there. He's doing some good work in the ruck. Picked up by Shaper. Hand passes over to Mosquito. Mosquito's hand pass was a bit wide for O'Donnell and uh, allowed Harley Purantratamiri to come in and pick it up. Off hands now. Dion Mankara wouldn't Gee, normally miss that. those ones, Wally. Yeah. No, he uh, was very clean. His work rate's been really good. He's continued uh, where he started off. Keeley for Tars runs out of the goal square, as you're allowed to do these days, of course. Takes a bounce. And now chips in short, finding Mosquito just outside the 50. Mosquito slowing things down. He's got a couple of spare players and uh, sees Rakawasa across towards the corridor. He comes back out again to Shaper. They're just chipping it around now. Uh, 
looking for things to open up as they go forward. That's not the best of kicks by Shaper and allows uh, Tiwi to come over the top. Cantilla for Tiwi drives it forward, but uh, it was Tars back there first, but the mark wasn't held by Zobel, and um, eventually it's dragged in underneath. A number of players there, and it'll be a ball up inside the forward 50 for Tiwi. Justin Bugle with his hand up to do the ruck work here. And uh, does pretty well, punches forward. But uh, only two E players there. Mankara keeps it in, hand passes over the top. Carroll takes possession and hand passes to no one in particular. Paddy Heenan gets a uh, quick hand pass out to Mankara, who uh, gets a pretty good hand pass out to Gerald Cunningham. And uh, Cunningham finishes as we know Gerald Cunningham can. So after uh, more than 10 minutes, that's the first goal of the quarter. It lacks a fortune there. I think Jared Cunningham was watching the game quite happily. <laughs> <laughs> the ball <laughs> made it up in his lap. But uh, Dion Mancaro, uh, his second and third effort in those areas was very good. And mm. the spark's gone out of the game a little bit, maybe. It certainly has. I was just thinking that the, the excitement's not there. But, I mean, you think about what these players are out there doing at the moment. Big 32, 33 degrees out there, 60% humidity, not a cloud in the sky. The smaller shadow starting to fall from the grandstand end uh, on, the, on the middle beach side of things here in Darwin. So, you know, these blokes have been going for close to two hours now in this heat. You can understand why the excitement and the pace has disappeared a little bit. 33 goals for the game, and uh, mm. the umpires would be feeling it too, especially the boundaries. Look. Long runs when you got to run that ball back. <laughs> That's why you're always a field umpire, Matty. <laughs> oh, don't take note of that one. <laughs> ball goes up, a Richo gets his hand to the ball. Brody Carroll sliding through. Uh, was unfortunately caught high there. I, uh, there wasn't much that, uh, that Paddy Heenan could have done to avoid contact there. Uh, Paddy uh, actually stopped and as he was coming, as he was sliding down. Yeah. So Brody's, uh, Brody Carroll's a bit sore in there, but uh, getting to his feet now. and um, It's the... Looks like we've got a blood rule blood out roll. of that. Yep. Um, pretty courageous player, Brody. He's, uh, he's Waratahs, co-captain of Waratahs this year and um, pretty important player. Of course, uh, he's got that, um, that uh, incident that he'll uh, want to forget where he was, the, uh, he was the player on the team sheet that caused him to lose the... It wasn't on the team sheet that caused him to lose the points earlier in the year. Would have oh. been all right if he didn't kick a goal. He would have got away with it. <laughs> What happens when you're good? People notice you. Play restarts now. Anchor's uh, surprisingly got across to take that free kick and uh, found O'Donnell, who drives it long into the forward line. Arigio off the ground. He's and, done uh, it. It's a goal. I think he's hurt himself doing it, but um, it's still a goal to the big fella. They're dropping like flies at the moment, aren't they? I think he might have uh, made contact with someone's body with, with his yeah, lower was, leg as he kicked. Yeah, it was touched. Roy Farmer got a hand to oh, us, okay. Jim. Yep, fair enough. And uh, Richo struggling to get back to his feet after that. He's a bit sore. So Farmer kicks it in. Out wide, looks like. Babui who that picks it up. But uh, boundary umpire said that he stepped over the line before he could kick it in. Richo up and on his feet now off screen. Limping pretty heavily, though. Mm, he's, he got, uh, he's got a bit of shin protection there on that leg. Reckon with a bit of damage on the shin, they might keep him out of the ruck work for the rest of the game. Well, the young fellow's done pretty well when he's leap. come in there. Yeah. So the ball comes out to Blake. His hand pass to Simpson. Blake comes back across the goal. I don't know. I was in his forward line, of course. And uh, Cantilla took the mark for Tiwi. Ball's knocked out of Roy Farmer's hands back there, but he butters up and uh, chips across again. And... Uh, so we have the opportunity through the buoy to come out of defence and uh, Luff in front out there. Can't take the mark in front of Wilkins. And uh, Wilkins ha ha hassling him all the way there. And uh, pretty good effort by the young fellow Wilkins there to, uh, to uh, put the pressure on the experienced Luff and, uh, and uh, get a restart with a boundary throw in. Wilkins up against Simpson here. Wilkins gets a hand to it, comes over the back. But uh, Simpson's back in again. In again, his jumper was pulled while he didn't have possession of the ball. And uh, Babui get, receives the hand pass, drives forward. That's not a kind bounce for Michael Dunn. And Kiranua over the top, so easily taps it forward to the advantage of Kim Cantilla, who drives the Tars forward. Shaper at the uh, front and centre of that uh, gets a hand pass out to O'Donnell. 
does some party trips around the back there. of the legs and uh, gets a hand pass out to Keranua who drives to centre half forward. Jeffrey Simon claims the mark there and that was pretty good over the top of Blake and uh, kicks out wide now and uh, his kick finds Cosmos Port Jimmy out on the halfback flank. Port Jimmy chips in to Molyneux under pressure from Bugler but Molyneux strong enough to take the mark in front just inside the square, centre square defensive side. He chips short again to Rodney Baird. Baird, uh, not much movement for Tiwi at the moment, so he... Uh, Got some movement on the outside here, Stu. Outside, yeah. So, uh, Harley Purin Tatamiri found some space. Change. <laughs> but, uh, ET slows it down and now chips inside. That's a pretty good kick, but the mark couldn't be taken and... Uh, Tars tidy up and the ball comes out to Brendan Minkolk. Brendan uh, Minkolk's been busy today, Stu. Yeah, he's, uh, he's playing good, at a high half forward. Good kid, isn't he? He's, um, he's played a few games now in the seniors and uh, looks like he's cementing in spot. His spot. Wilkins there unable to take the mark. But, uh, made some good ground, but um, ball's out of bounds in front of the uh, Harrison Hunter stand here at Gardens Oval. On uh, Aboriginal TV Channel 4, streaming with Larrakia Radio. We're um, 15 minutes, 16 minutes into the last quarter, and uh, it's looking like uh, Waratahs picking up their first points for the year. Molyneux read that well off the pack and uh, burst through a couple of players and kicks to the advantage of Whale Buxton out in front inside the uh, forward 50, and he marks about 40 out. Kicked a couple of goals in the third quarter. They were from a bit closer range. Um, well, we reckon he never probably had two under his belt. He might get three today. Mm. I haven't got any money on him for this one, Wally. Yeah, little faith, Stewie. You should look after your big fellas. and uh, <laughs> He'll slide this left and he'll come back right and he'll go through the middle, Stu. If I was oh. a defender, I'd be on the goal line waiting for this. Look, He's got a good you. piece of it. Told you. It's going all the way through for a goal. Never in doubt. And uh, Big Whale Buxton kicks his third goal. I don't know who <laughs> deserves more of a medal there, Whale well. Buxton or Wally. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of positive thinking, I think. Come on. Well, he, uh, to his credit, he... he, he Came in pretty pur purposefully and uh, and uh, got a fair bit behind it, as, and uh, so made the distance easily. Wobbled in the air, and uh, but kept it on line. Had enough power in it to keep it on line. Yeah, it's been a bit of a uh, lull in the proceedings at the moment, with both teams just going through the motions. And mm. really, it's uh, it's been a hard working day, as M Matty was saying before. You know, they've been out there for a couple of hours, and they've worked really well. And you know, 30 odd goals in the game of football really. Uh, really does take its toll. So, uh, bounce this time. Umpire says that's OK, even mm. though it went outside the circle. It did. And, um, well, the game goes on. Simpson gets a hand pass forward, but Paddy Heenan's going to be first out here. He uh, kicks it in front of himself and uh, tries again, but almost misses this time. Bugler picks it up, tries to barrel it forward, and uh, tambling underneath that one. Couldn't take the mark. Anchors comes in. Hand passes to Moore, back to Anchors. Can't break the tackle there. Gets a hand pass though, and uh, Dom Booth gets a hand pass across to Moore. Inside to Keranua. Keranua saw Carroll lurking in the forward line, but uh, Rodney Baird came across and chopped it off with a fist and saw it go out of bounds. That's one area the A Bankers has got really good in, Stuart Matty. He just stands up and tackles and really mm. strong and gives himself every opportunity to deliver the ball to a teammate. Boundary throw in. Aricio and Simpson. Aricio over the back cleverly to Kim Cantilla, but uh, Cantilla's kick, he probably had a bit more time than he realised then and threw it on the boot, but it went out of bounds in the forward pocket. So uh, Rodney Baird will bring it back in for Tiwi. He goes short across the goal face to Simpson, and uh, Simpson chips in to Port Jimmy. Port Jimmy wheels around now. Out in front of Luff, who couldn't take the mark, but uh, butters up pretty well with a hand pass. And uh, umpire said he was held, and uh, he followed up and tried to take the advantage, but was uh, was caught down there. And um, some good work by Brendan Minkolk. 
never gave up on the contest. And uh, Brody Carroll across half back kicks forward. He was down in the forward pocket about 30 seconds ago, so doing a power of work. Abank is on the end of this one. Kicks inside the forward 50, comes over the back. Michael Dunn's the first there in the goal square, and uh, he fumbles it into the goal post. So a minor score for Tars. So almost uh, almost 20 minutes into the quarter, Tars still haven't kicked a goal this quarter, but uh, they've got enough of a buffer that that doesn't really matter, I would imagine. Mm. Uh, Donald takes the intercept mark here. He's been good in the second half, Wally. Strong yeah, player. He's been uh, good for for mine for the majority of the game and. Uh, Continues to work in the middle of the ground, allowing Ankers and Brody Carroll and especially Strubens to say forward, who was playing mainly in, on ball in the first half. So uh, Tars coming forward again, but uh, again the kickoff line. And uh, Brody Carroll again, I think, missing uh, with that one That's from deep on the outer side. Fifth point for the quarter. So have they tidied up their kicking a bit? We saw a few missed opportunities in the first half as well. I mean, they're at 128 at the moment. They could well be up at 160, 170. Mm. Contest here at halfback. Picked up by Booth, but he's tackled and the ball spills out. Molyneux underneath the pack manages to work it out. Kim Cantilla picks it up cleanly. Hand pass to Kieran Moore. One step yeah, around the good. corner. And Tars mm. score their first goal for the quarter at almost the 21 minute mark. And Cantilla, uh, I think, kick by five. I reckon he's kicked five, yeah. He's kicked five, and uh, that's the way you do it. Just stand and deliver from 49 metres out, just around your body. Yeah, see on the replay here. Yeah. So, uh, Waratah, have, um, over the years, have had a had a pretty strong Tiwi connection, Wally, and um, Cantilla and Karanua are obviously important players for him again this year. Yeah, you know, and... Cantilla and Kerenua and um, I know Ming Colt's not a Tiwi but you know he's he's been good over the last couple of years for them and you know so they continue to uh, be uh, loyal to the Waratahs that have looked after them so it's good to see in modern day football. Of course we're playing for the Morris Rioli Cup today and uh, Morris Rioli himself playing for both these teams in his career. It's uh, Wilkins again too tall in the middle gets the tap it's uh Hacked forward out there by Tars. Kerenua gets a tap over to Gardner, running in on the left foot, and oh, uh, hit the his post. kick hits the post. Some, um, some pretty smart work from Kerenua there, although uh, some of the purists might not have liked it too much, Wally. A one hand slap. Yeah. But it was effective. Roy Farmer with a big <laughs> barrel out of the goal square. Gets it down towards uh, the wing here, but Shaper tidies up at the back. Hand pass over the top, looking for Blake, who runs onto it now. On the outside of the left foot, brings it back in, but Rodney Baird's back there. And uh, he relieves Fatiwi to the outer side, looking for Michael Dunn. Dunn takes the mark, plays on straight away. Looking for Babui here out on the uh, outer wing. He plays on. I don't know if that ball was touched, but... Uh, Holding the ball's the decision. Anchors picks it up, calm as you like, uh, in front of the mark and kicks forward and finds Struvens again inside the 50. Still lining up for his sixth one, Matty. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it. <laughs> I think you might get it this time. What do you think, Stu? Oh, I think it's a certain... I've already got it marked down, Wally, so <laughs> um, no problem at all. Well, you are the goal-kicking expert. <laughs> it's the Ruckmans he doesn't back. <laughs> Was good kick it, go. <laughs> Thankfully, there's not too many out there that would remember those days. Struben's kick on the way is straight through the middle, and that is his what goal? His sixth goal for the game, Stu. And the siren sounds, and uh, a pretty comfortable win for Tars in the end, Matty. It certainly was, and the Tars fans are very happy, of course, after being stripped of that round three win. This is now officially their first win of the season, 21-15, 149. Tiwi Bombers, look, full credit to them, though. 15 goals on the scoreboard is not a bad day out, 15-8-98. Um, Wally, final thoughts on the game? Yeah, I thought uh, Waratahs were very consistent for the four-quarter performance, and I thought that Arruccio, Anka Strubens, and, and Brendan Min Minkle playing through the middle and at half-forward, I thought he was quite serviceable, and uh, O'Loughlin as well. Stu, some might argue we had the Donald, uh, sorry. Yep. Chief Minister uh, up in the commentary box for the first quarter, the patron of the Waratah Football Club. Uh, perhaps he was the good luck charm for the Tars today. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was, uh, it was good of him to come up and spend some time with us and share his thoughts. And, uh, of course, he's been here all day. He uh, umpired the mini league at half time, and he's going to uh, present the Michael Long Cup now to the, uh, to the winning Rialli. team. The Morris Rialli Cup, of course. Yes. Joy luck. <laughs> It's been a long day, Wally. It has, Duke. Well, for our YouTube viewers, stick around and see the presentation of the Morris Rioli Cup. For those watching on Aboriginal TV, Channel 4's coverage of the 2019-2020 TIO NTFL season, thanks for your company, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Ryan, and also 
14-year-old William Catman, who loves to say a few words, a very shy Brady Carroll. a fantastic day. This is all sponsored by our patron Michael Gunner. So we, again, we'd like to put our hands together and thank you very much. We'd also like to thank all of our sponsors and you look around this ground. On the feeds you will see all of our names of our sponsors, all our major sponsors, our corporate sponsors, Elite Golf and we thank all of our sponsors very much for this day. Thank you very much. It's time to go to the clubhouse, have a quiet, pleasing aisle with the Chief Minister.